Hello friends, this is Worm, and today I wanted to talk about two things, one of which being how to obtain Necrochasm, and not just how to obtain it, uh, more so the my thoughts on how it's obtained, and I wanted to talk about LFGs, because I was going to make this two separate videos, but I felt like that would be, they could be combined into one. So I want to start with Necrochasm, because when I first saw how to obtain Necrochasm, which of course you got it for free if you completed the first 40 or I'm sorry, 50 hours of the raid because there was a little bug. Uh, but also if you didn't and you did not get Necrochasm, you have to do a quest line to get it. And I've seen on media a lot of players complain about this quest. They say, oh, like, you know, Bungie, it's BS that you added this element of RNG on top of, you know, making it require multiple steps. Okay. And this was my initial thought too. I was like, man, why would, why would Bungie go out and make us basically have to get an exotic weapon like 20 times before we can actually get it? Like why would we, they make us have to go out and collect 20 oversoul to get this and oversouls have a random chance at dropping, but I slept on it and I've thought about it. And I actually think this is probably the way to go when it comes to getting exotics from this point on now number one uh, you know let's address the elephant in the room rng is a fickle thing and it does suck when things are tied to rng right uh you know my wife for example we cleared atheon for oh gosh how many weeks straight i want to say it was 15 or 16 weeks straight on three characters before she finally got vex mythic last okay that's like three months and this was before, uh, before, you know, you could farm Atheon and stuff like that. So RNG is a fickle thing. And in my household, we know about it. We know how it is. Uh, and yeah, it's frustrating that Bungie added this, you know, RNG element where it's like, oh, I can only have a chance at getting these things and I need 20 of them, blah, 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 blah. But let's take a step back and look at the reality of it. And the reality of it is you are guaranteed to get Necrochasm at some points. Like if you are unlucky, like my wife was with Vex Mythoclast, it could take you literally months to get Necrochasm, right? But Bungie has set up the, the quest in a way that allows players to literally, if you want it this week, you can go out and get it this week. Right, you can go complete a raid on all three characters. Uh, now, I don't know the drop chance of the essence of the Oversoul that you get from you know per raid that you do. I don't know if you're guaranteed to get three for your first week, or if you're guaranteed to get only one, or if you're even guaranteed to get any at all. But even after you do your weekly raid on the same character, you can farm essence of Oversoul, right? And that's 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 a huge huge deal to point out. Okay, I've got I've read multiple articles and stuff, and and we were doing it the other night. I was farming the the Abyss Encounter, and a couple of my teammates got essence of Oversoul on their third and fourth run in on the same character. So it is possible to farm it out. And this, in my opinion, is, is the way to go because number one, it allows hardcore and dedicated players to get the exotic quicker, right? Like if you sit and you farm the raid over and over and over again, you can get Necrochasm. Like you don't have to wait till, you know, uh, however many weeks. Cause imagine if it was just an RNG chance drop, right? If it was strictly RNG, at the end of each week, if you didn't get it on three characters, you got three chances to get it, and that's it. If you didn't get it, I, you're SOL. You got to wait till next week, right? That's the problem that players have. That's the problem my wife and I had. What is uh, 15 times three? That's 45, 45 Atheon kills before she finally got the Vex, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what it is. Uh, and that's that's at the time, you know, whenever they buffed it and she really wanted it. Like, we'd done previous clears, I don't know how many, where she hadn't gotten Vex Mythoclast. But with Necrochasm, you're kind of protected from that bad RNG. Now, I, I suppose that there could be some element where, you know, maybe you just get really unlucky and get absolutely zero oversouls, right? But even then, you can complete challenges and triumphs to get even more essences of the oversoul. Now, I did a raid yesterday, did the full thing in about an hour, and I got three essences from that raid. That's where I got that number three earlier. So I don't suspect that you're going to have bad luck and not get any, right? But I don't know the drop chance or anything of these, uh, you know, of the essence of oversouls. So I think that one thing Bungie should change is every week you're guaranteed to get at least one essence of oversold per character, right? Not per account, but per character you can hop on. And when you kill Crota, you are guaranteed to get at least one essence, right? Cause even at that rate, three characters, you need 20 in total. Let's say you have really bad luck and you get absolutely zero, 
right? You get zero um, essence of the Oversouls uh, as random drops. And the only essence that you get are from Crota on your three characters each week. In six weeks, you'll have the exotic, right? Like that to me is a, is, is a RNG protection because like I said, like I know that there's somebody that's going to watch this video who still doesn't have X raid exotic and they farmed it. I don't even know how many times I actually had a, a clan member of mine uh, so a couple months ago, obviously they were farming Volta glass on whenever it was a farmable raid, farmable raid. They killed Atheon 47 times before they finally got back to the class. Like that's to me, that's insane, right? That is, that is an absolute insane amount of grinding. And with this new, you know, with the way that they're doing necrochasm, you're, you're guaranteed not to have that happen. Almost. Like I said, I don't know the exact like drop chance. Like, I don't know if you're guaranteed one per week from Crota. Uh, if anybody has any knowledge on that, please let me know because I would assume Bungie did that. But if not, that's something I do think Bungie should add into the game. But yeah, I mean, Necrochasm Quest, at first I was very frustrated to see it's going to take me a long time to get it. But when I sit back and think about it, it was the same thing with, um, uh, what's that shot? Uh, conditional Finality right? It took me a long time to get Conditional Finality because before it was in the raid rotation, I had to do it three times a week. So I got three chances to get it and I didn't get it for weeks and weeks and weeks on end with the oversoul, the essence of the oversoul. This is, this is guaranteeing that players who have more time to invest in destiny two are going to get it quicker, right? This is the only time. In fact, I think this is the only time ever where a raid weapon is in a way farmable. A raid exotic is in a way farmable before the raid is actually put into the, the rotation, right? The, the weekly, you know, raid farming rotation. This is, I mean, this was, in my opinion, this was a big brain move by Bungie, you know, and I see people complaining about it and saying, oh, it's BS. It takes so many, you know, and lots of people are saying they added, you know, this now RNG chance on top of a quest. Like that's, that's, you know, annoying, blah, blah, blah. But again, yes, there's an RNG chance on top of a quest, but you can farm any encounter. You don't have to just kill Crota. You can go in and one phase ear Utes in like three minutes and do that over and over and over again to farm your essences, even on the same character. Like I cannot stress how, how big that is. Even on the same character, you can farm it out. Like it's, it's, it's a, it's a perfect move by Bungie because the players who have more time to invest will get it quicker, but you're still like, you have that, that RNG protection, right? Uh, because even if you can only do like one or two raids a week, I guarantee you, you're going to get at least one essence of oversoul. I don't know that for a fact. And I think that if, if you don't get at least one essence from a raid per week, that Bungie should guarantee that as a drop. But I don't know, man. I think that this, the way they've structured this is fantastic. And I think what makes people frustrated is, you know, they gave it out as a, as a 48 hour contest mode, uh, you know, clear, like if you cleared it in the first 48 hours, you just got it for free, you know? So I think players, they have this sense of entitlement that like, oh, you know, I should be able to get it easy right? I should be able to get it easier. I shouldn't have to wait. I shouldn't have to have to farm it every week, you know, and players are complaining that they have to now, you know, there's now this RNG chance and they have to farm it. But like, this has never been done before. Like to, to my players that are complaining about how you get necrochasm, think about it. If necrochasm was strictly a random chance drop, you get three chances a week to get it. And if you have bad luck, you're screwed for that week. You know, you have to wait the next week, like in, in, in its current setup, I believe I, I have yet to clear a, a, a Crota's in raid where I haven't got at least one essence of oversoul. Right? So even at that rate, you can theoretically get it in a week. Like if you, if you, if you have the time and you have the patience and effort to farm it, you can get necrochasm in a week. Okay. And yes, you have to put in more work for it, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Again, it's a raid exotic. It's, it seems like a pretty decent weapon, right? It's like players are complaining that, Oh, we have to farm it now. Like what would you have done if you had bad RNG, you would have had to farm it anyways. And then, you know, let's say you do it three times a week for over the next, you know, several months and you still don't get it. Then it goes into the raid rotator. Then on the road, uh, you know, when, whenever Crota's in the rotation, you got to sit and farm Crota again for that RNG chance. Like I would much rather have this quest that's associated like this, where I can farm any encounter I want for essence of oversoul. I can get it as quickly as, as you know, not as quickly as I want, but reasonably I can get it in a week. 
like i don't know i think the necrochasm quest like i was initially disappointed to see that you know oh like it's it's a quest and there's rng it's like basically you have to you know uh, uh you have to get 20 of these random chance drops but when you factor in the fact that you can get it from four different encounters like I said, like I did a raid yesterday. I got three essence from doing one raid. It took an hour to clear that raid. And I got three essences. Like that's not bad at all. You know, if I had that same luck, I could get it, you know, in, in literally like seven hours, right? Six or seven. Or well, I guess I'm at, I'm at six right now or nine right now. So it'd take me even less than that. At any rate, four hours. There you go. That's, that's my math skills for you. Four hours. So I don't know. Like that's my thoughts on Necrochasm. Of course, I want to hear your thoughts on the quest, you know, the quest line, stuff like that. Like, do you like the new quest? Do you not like it? If you are complaining about the new quest, please be specific in the comments as to why you don't like it. Because I, I literally don't see a reason why to not like it unless you are insanely lucky and you've gotten every single raid drop on like your first, second, or even third clear, right? Like, I don't know. But yeah, that's 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 it for Necrochasm. Um, uh, but the next thing I want to talk about is actually LFG. Because I've seen on media a lot that players are complaining and, and you know, bitching, pardon my language, about LFG and the fact that, oh, the raid's only been out for X number of days and you already have these know what to do's and, uh, you know, KWTD stuff like that. And people don't like that. People say that, you know, everyone else is being an elitist, blah, blah, blah. And my thoughts on that are that's, hey, that's not true. Okay. Number one toxicity they're, that's what they're saying they're saying it's toxic right that they're they're asking people to know what to do and uh you know they're going to be kicked blah 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 i think the first and most important thing we can do is define what toxicity is right and, and toxicity in gaming is really any player that has a really bad attitude towards a game and towards players in a game now obviously we can get the elephant out of the room like if you're going to be you know racist and sexist and homophobic and stuff in your raid group like yeah that's toxic that's that's not okay right but for a raid group for somebody to make an lfg post and say please know what to do why is that an issue like number one you have not had any contact with that person yet right you don't know their attitude towards the game Okay, you don't know if they're asking know what to do because they're a rude tryhard or if they want people that know what to do because they only have an hour to get as far in as they can and they want a team that can actually complete each encounter in a reasonable amount of time so they can finish the raid within that hour, right? Like you don't know. And so I don't think it's fair for people to say that others are being toxic on these forums when you don't know that person like you have not communicated with that person at all you don't know how they are like i can't tell you how many raid groups i'll join that say know what to do quick run blah 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 and i join in and it's the friendliest group of guys i've ever raided with or girls too sometimes but obviously more men play this game than women um but yeah like they're not toxic players it's not toxic to ask for people that know what to do it's not toxic to say hey know what to do or get kicked because again not everybody has eight nine ten hours to put into the game okay like players might get two hours at most a day and in that two hours they want to get a clear done they don't want to get stuck teaching people and you know dealing with people that don't really know what to do and having to do the same encounter over and over again because they want to get the clear out of the way right that's 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 my thoughts on that. Like that's, that's where we're at with that. Like it's not a toxic thing to ask for players that know what to do. Now, of course, if you join a know what to do group and you join and the, the leader is being a complete uh, asshole, you know, and he's calling out everybody else and stuff for, for mistakes, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, then you can say, okay, that's toxic. But to say that an LFG post is toxic for not wanting to teach you or for not wanting to, you know, have players that don't know what to do like that's that's just a wrong statement you know and i also see players on you know again social media they're complaining they're like oh I, you know all i see is know what to do post know what to do uh kwtd like nobody's willing to teach i don't know where these players are getting this information from like we see the same forums we see the same fire team finders right literally every time i get on the fire team finder you know bungie's fire team finder i see at least two to three raid groups saying willing to teach you know, teaching one, uh, like, you know, first clear, let's do this. Like I see all these raids. Like, I think the people who are complaining about you know, and, and being mad at, Oh, well, like, you know, like it's not fair. Like I'm trying to learn. So like, these are players that don't want to learn. They want to be carried, 
right? And there's a big difference. Like players that want to learn, they'll join these learning groups or they'll make their own group and say, hey, like this is my first clear. Let's go do this, right? Like the entitlement that comes with so many gamers. And I, and I hate, I hate saying that word. I don't like the word entitlement because I think people use it incorrectly. But in this case, the entitlement that is associated with, you know, people saying, oh, like, you know, nobody wants to help me, like, blah, blah, blah. I guarantee you the people that say that have not made their own fire team and said, hey, this is my first clear. Let's all get together and do it. Right. They don't want to do the raid with other first time clears like they want to do it with somebody who can guide them and show them. Right. And there's nothing wrong with wanting that. Like I, if I was to do a first time raid, I would definitely want a Sherpa. You know, if I joined a fire team for a raid and I didn't know how to do it, I would tell them, I'd say, hey, I don't know how to do this. Like, can you can you help me out? Like, let's let's figure it out together, blah, blah, blah. But that doesn't excuse players, you know, not making posts for themselves. You know, hey, you can you can make a post that says, hey, this is I, I've never cleared it. I need some Sherpas to teach me how to do it. And I need some first timers, right? Or I just need some Sherpas or you can just put Crota's in raid. That's it. Just Crota's in raid. There you go. You're going to get a mixed bag. You're going to get people who've never done it. You're going to get people who've done it once. You might get somebody who's done it a hundred times. I don't know, right? But this this whole, you know, players calling other people out for being toxic because they set up these forum posts that, uh, that, that say they want people that know what to do. That's not toxic. That's not toxic. That's not inappropriate. That's not that's not even wrong, in my opinion, because you don't know what somebody's got going on. Like, you don't know if that person has two hours and that's it. That's all they get. Right. So I, I think that, you know, to the people who are complaining about, you know, Oh, like all this toxicity on, on, on fire team finders, like take a step back and take a deep breath and realize that, Hey, no, it's not toxicity. Like, yes. There are toxic players on the forums. Okay. Let's take a memory trip back to D one, you know, Volta glass Crota's in when it first came out, that was major uh, toxicity, right? Because you would literally get kicked for not having a certain weapon, that weapon being Gallahorn, right? That is more on a more on the toxic scale, right? Gallahorn was not necessary, but it made Crota a lot easier. But even then, even then, like, is it really a bad thing that players want an easier clear on a raid? Like, yes, you could definitely kill Crota without five Gallahorns, but having five Gallahorns made it so much easier. Right. But I would say like that was the that was like the peak of Destiny 2's, you know, LFG toxicity. Since then, we have come down a long, long way. Like it's not toxic that somebody asks for for players that know what to do. You know, it, it's not toxic to ask for quick runs. It's not toxic to remove somebody from a fire team who doesn't know what they're doing. Like that's not a toxic thing. Now, if they say that you're trash and, you know, they start smack talking, that's toxic. Right. But if you just get booted because you've never done it, that's the person that booted you is not toxic. Okay. But yeah, that's my soapbox on that. Uh, with that being said, I want to hear your thoughts, of course, on toxicity in destiny and blah, blah, blah. Like what are your thoughts on LFG post being toxic, right? Cause that's everybody's favorite word. I don't, I don't think that they're toxic, but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Of course, if you like today's video, drop a like, it helps out the channel a lot. Subscribe for more daily destiny content and conversations such as this one. And, uh, do me a favor, watch the videos you see on the end screen uh or else my angry hog potato back there will come and haunt your dreams bye for now guys